Me and Trond Westby, a wildlife photographer from Stavanger, collaborated on a video some time ago. We were hoping for a chance to photograph the black grouse in the wee hours of the day. Which we did. We had the birds to ourselves for almost two hours while the sun slowly rose over the mountains, lighting the scene perfectly. You can check out that video right here. And while you're at it, check out Trond's video as well. While we waited for the birds, however, I grabbed the opportunity to interview Trond. Me focusing primarily on landscapes, I figured I had a lot to learn from him and thought maybe my viewers also can learn something. So here it is, my interview with a vampire, I mean interview with a wildlife photographer. Where, where did I put the interview? <laughs> so, I think uh, a few of my viewers know who you are, know your channel, but most people who watch my channel do it mainly for landscape photography. Mm. And uh, from my understanding, wildlife photography is a bit different. Mm. And that's why I prepared these questions. Wow. And then my homework. And these are that's really good. tough questions. Wow. <laughs> so I'm ah. gonna do a short interview with Tom. <laughs> And uh, hopefully we'll all learn something, including me. Your your YouTube channel is is quite new. Six months. Six months. Yeah. And uh, it's been growing really fast. Uh, but uh, from my understanding, you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, nature photography. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since 2010, I started, and then I bought my first camera. So this is so I'm guessing now nine years. And uh, your first camera, what what was it? That was a Nikon D3000. And you, you're still using Nikon? Yeah, I do. Uh, and how important is good gear in, uh, let's, let's say, bird photography? Yeah. Uh, the thing I learned about uh, equipment is that uh, you need to learn uh, your equipment 100% so you know how it reacts in different light setting and you know how uh, long range you have on, on the lens as well so I'm so glad that I did uh, just started with the most cheapest and simplest equipment that I got and uh, I just needed to learn to how to get closer to birds or to get the birds in an environment as well yeah, like uh, kind of, if you have less to work with, then you find new techniques yeah, yeah. to make it work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah. That's probably useful. So, of course, it, it uh, the equipment was has a limitation, though, but uh, as I worked around and learned uh, the my camera and I also learned about uh, my subjects with these birds and wildlife, I did get better how to get close to them and how to use that and then I uh, bought new equipment uh, and get a little bit more of um, yeah freedom to, to do mm. what I want and one of the great things about wildlife photography and photography in general is I love being creative, I love being creative in nature to, to capture things uh, creatively. Yeah. yeah. And not all, always having all the options gear-wise yeah. can f force you to be more creative. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. just back to to shutter speed. If if there's birds, mm. what what is what is the one point you never go below in shutter speed? Uh, it depends on the, if it's a small bird or it's a large bird. But small birds, uh, if if the shutter speed is under a um, hundred of a second uh, I'm really stressed out but of course the general there is like a is there a rule that uh, if you have a 500 millimeter you should have at least a 500 of a second okay. to freeze like uh, the shake of your hand or whatever but I have developed some techniques and uh, and also I, I take a lot of images of if I want a portrait I would take a lot of images just to 
uh, to and be sure that the uh, head is sharp and doesn't move the head and so on. Because it, it's a bit of a learning curve. It's it's not like, let's say, landscapes where you, you place a camera on a tripod and you have all the time in the world. Mm. Usually, to get the composition framed and all the correct settings, it, it's it's more of a. Sometimes it happens really fast, and you have to be prepared for for the bird taking off, or you have to follow. You, you mentioned it's almost like shooting clay pigeons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to move with the camera if if the bird is in flight, for example. Yeah. So if you if you like want to capture birds uh, of prey in flight or owls in flight, uh, they can be really tricky. And uh, what I did before I took some pictures of owls in flight, I did uh, practice on gulls because gulls is more uh, common and you can go to a local park and just practice the flight. So you you need like the, um, you le need to learn uh, or teach your body to to get that f motion and, and uh, track the bird before you want to like test it on owls or you for example, in owls, you might get only one chance of a of an owl hunting and coming towards you. If you don't have any practice at all, you can miss the shot. So makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> practice. <laughs> Absolutely. In general, uh, when you're in a hide like this, how long do you need to wait before your subjects show up? If you're just a broad estimate. Mm, uh, yeah, it depends on the wildlife and depends on how much research do you have done and yeah but if you in general see I have to wait uh, about four to five hours in a hide and I have uh, been in a hide for almost nine or ten hours straight without seeing any bird at all and, that, and that's that's okay yeah, 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 that's no <laughs> no problem. Uh, do you have bathroom but, breaks? Yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> we pee in a bottle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, for me, the what what you not know and what you not know what's gonna be in around the corner if a bird shows up or yeah. So you forget that you are waiting and you always learn something new when you're waiting in a hide as well because you're thinking about uh, you're thinking about positioning next time or you're thinking about uh, light background and uh, how you're gonna do a certain thing though in, in wildlife photography and also planning other projects. That is also a place we can actually plan something new when the, the daily activities is uh, hectic with work and family. Uh, you don't always get that chance to plan another project, but sitting in a hide, you can also plan further ahead. So yeah, it's almost like uh, meditating. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, absolutely. Uh, looking at your videos, I can see a lot of joy and excitement. Uh, when you talk and describe what you're seeing. Can you remember the first time you felt that rush of excitement and decided that this this is your calling? This type mm, of Yeah, therapy? actually I do. Uh, so it was... I just I got my, uh, my DSLR camera and uh, 55 to 200 and I was walking around the woods mainly and just shooting every bird that I can come over. But... Uh, one time I learned um, uh, uh, there's a little bird called uh, Willow Warbler. It's the most common bird in Norway, but it travels to Africa in winter time. Mm -hmm. It's a small bird. It's not um, very colorful or anything, but um, the song of this bird, I have memories from childhood because everyone has heard uh, the song of the Willow Warbler. Uh, so when I uh, go to a place in a forest where I, I heard the, uh, the Willow Warbler, I play a little sound from my mobile phone uh, just to get the attention for the bird. And the bird 
came to me right away and it was about just two meters. I was uh, non uh, camouflage and uh, and open and, and the bird was not afraid of me at all and uh, hopping around on sticks and I sit there with only a 200 millimeter so I need to be really close to get any picture but I actually got a, a, a picture uh, almost no cropping at all because it was so close. But the picture when I see it today is not a good picture at all because the background is uh, blue sky and I don't like that uh, type of background. And the light was too hard but the feeling I got when I got a picture of um, a bird close to me that was the best feeling I ever ever gotten and uh, I remember it like it was yesterday so I think that was the, mainly the picture that kicked all thing together. The picture yeah. of the willow wobbler. Yeah. Where it all started. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the Norwegian name for the willow wobbler? Lövsanger. Ah. Now I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know willow wobbler. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite? photograph do you have one one that the first one that comes to mind that I took yeah so I have a, a picture of that in my head for many years and I want um, a roe there or a red there in between uh, the cotton flowers uh, and last year I actually got the chance of a beautiful buck uh, came straight to me. I was of course in a, in a ghillie suit and uh, it wasn't, uh, they didn't know that I was there but when the buck came towards me and was in the middle of that meadow uh, and I got the picture uh, that I have thought in for many years, it was a really mixed feeling of getting the picture that I wanted and uh, and the motion between uh, the, the connection between me and the they did not did not know that I was there, but uh, the connection I felt. I think that is possibly why I like that picture or pictures. I got a lot of pictures that day that I liked that um, uh, really really much. It felt good to yeah kind of see it first in your head absolutely, and then, and then get it. Yeah. I can I can I can relate to that. Yeah. It's uh it's a beautiful picture I've seen it. You showed it to me yeah. <laughs> a couple Thanks. of hours ago. <laughs> it's it's beautiful. Yeah. I'll put it on screen here so uh if if I'm allowed to Yeah, do that. of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any um past or present uh, kind of wildlife photography heroes that you look up to and Admire. Yeah, yeah, you can look for inspiration. Of course. Can you name one mm, or two? Yeah, uh, the first one I um, I think is probably the most um, uh, inspirational for for me is a Hungarian photographer called uh, Ben Semate. I don't know if I pronounce it right, but yeah, he is a really really creative wildlife photographer uh, from Hungary. Uh, he creates uh, special and really great images with using his mm, creative mind to to get around different perspective mm. and and getting different angles and um, experimenting with the external light and so on and so on. He has been a really really ins inspiration for me and uh, still is with his uh, images. So I. I'm guessing he is my number one. Now the question that everybody has been waiting for, uh, I'm sure. Okay. The most important question of them all. <laughs> because you, you've, you've photographed bears, you've photographed, <coughs> was it wolves? No, yes? I have photographed some wolf and yeah. wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. And birds of prey, yeah. eagles, Yeah. seagulls. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been attacked? By your subject? No, <laughs> never, <laughs> never actually. That's uh, this, okay, it's <laughs> one time actually, uh, almost, but that is um, 
there I don't know if I live by the coast and by the coast in summertime there come some turns and if you walk by in an area that they have nests they can be really aggressive and uh, one time I had to lay on the ground and I wasn't wasn't having over my camera to photograph or anything I was just walking having a, a walk in on the beach and suddenly the turn showed up and tried to chase me away but it was so aggressive I had to lay down on the beach with my hands over my head to protect me <laughs> and, <laughs> that's what you get when you're stealing the eggs <laughs> yeah and I did but, yeah when you're out photographing wildlife for example and birds uh, you need to learn uh, the behavior and the signs, for example, the muskox, and you need to learn the signs uh, when they are irritated, because if you're not, you're disturbing the wildlife, and you don't want to do that. And also, uh, you can put yourself in really danger. So, what are the signs of an irritating muskox? <laughs> oh, there is three things. The one is they blow their nose, uh, and the other thing is that they scratch their, uh, their, what did it call in English? Hoof? Yeah, uh, I don't know, yeah. 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 Their feet in the, the ground. And the other thing, if they are near a tree, they can scratch the head in the tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't listen to that sign there, it can be in real trouble. They run at 60 kilometers an hour, and they can get that in one second almost. All right, that's... So, uh, yeah. And with, with a 30 kilo backpack, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're no match for. <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right, thank yeah. you for the interview. I think that was no all, I, all I had. That's it was good. interesting. I learned a lot. Good. Not sure how I'm going to edit this. Maybe I'll put it in one go in one minute video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a conversation with a wildlife. Was it only one minute? <laughs> how long is it? Uh, 30 minutes. Oh. It's a lot of ad money. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, back to back to the hide.